We have Congressman Louis Gohmert from the great state of Texas is on the line. Congressman Gohmert, thanks for joining us here on Breitbart News Saturday. Well, I, I was just listening to Brandon, and uh, I've seen him down there on the border. He does an amazing job covering that area. Uh, I wish uh, the, the people had been allowed to be as diligent uh, in working for the Border Patrol during the Obama years as Brandon has been covering that area. But uh, anyway, uh, I've been down there uh, with Brandon. I've seen him at work. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that and, – and, and really the point he was making covering all of that criminality on the Mexico side of our border – and, and it does spill over in some places, but not where we have walls like uh, El Paso. But um, the, the point ought to be uh, if you really want to be compassionate for the Mexican people, for Central America, you know, the most compassionate thing we could do would be to secure the border dry up the tens of billions of dollars every year that that we in America are uh, having flood across our border into the drug cartels in Mexico. And that's what keeps Mexico so corrupt. It keeps law enforcement scared if they're not corrupt with the drug cartels. Uh, it's one of the most dangerous places in the world, if not the most dangerous, to be a law enforcement officer if you're not on the take with the drug cartels. So the most compassionate thing we could do, dry up that money. The corruption comes to a crawl and becomes controllable in Mexico. Mexico is able to, to make more use of its incredible vast natural resources it's uh, incredibly hardworking people. And then you start building a big middle class in Mexico. Right now, you've got rich, you've got very poor, like you do in, in even in, it, well, that's largely what you have in socialist societies. But you want to be compassionate for the people of Mex Mexico. It's not to create a porous bo or keep a porous border where we fund the drug cartels that keep their country scared and in misery no you secure the border and that means a wall where we need it it means total security and then i mean if that's the most important thing to somebody compassion for the mexican people that's what we do mm -hmm. uh you know what's really interesting congressman is as we're talking about all of this uh in uh, there's this whole debate about uh, whether there's a national emergency on the border and i know that there's yeah. discussion as to whether or not the president will do that uh kind of a declaration and go that route but the, the nobody really talks about it uh, with rare exception and you know i'm glad brandon is doing everything he's doing down there but the point yep. is that hardly anybody talks about the fact that we have transnational criminal organizations that essentially control the uh the, the they definitely control northern mexico all of those different parts and they they have in many cases control over a lot of different things that happen on this side of the border uh well, how how serious right. are the cartels well it's it, it is so dangerous. I'm glad you bring that up. And Brandon was was going through and and listing all of the cartels along that way. But what the Border Patrol made clear to me when I go and spend all night down there uh, numerous times, uh, you don't cross the U.S. Mexico border anywhere into the United States without paying the drug cartels. Yes, it may be a gang that you pay directly, but that money is ultimately going to the drug cartels. As a Border Patrol tells me, there's not one inch of the U.S.-Mexico border that the, some drug cartel does not claim ownership to. You cross in their sector, and they will find you in the U.S. and kill you. You just do not cross without paying them. And uh, so it it is incredibly serious how... On our side of the border, we have had for too many administrations, uh, administrations that were not serious about securing that border when on just the other side. And as you say, Matt, spilling into the United States, you have these corrupt drug cartels that are deadly. Uh, so if you want to drop the money, you control the border. But these poor people that cross the border – they either 
paid significant thousands of dollars that ultimately went to the drug cartel or, as I've heard them say, as, as our Border Patrol would ask the question, even though it wasn't on their list, how much did you pay to come in at five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars uh, dollars where do you get that kind of money? You don't have that kind of money. It's obvious looking at them. They didn't have that kind of money. Uh, and they say, well, you know, we got a thousand here. We collect in Mexico. We got 1500 from people in America. So where the other money come from? They're going to let us work it off when we get to the city where we're going. And for so long, as the Border Patrol says, uh, the drug cartels in northern Mexico call us in, in Homeland Security, their logistics, like the commercial. The drug cartels get these people across the border, and they give them an address where they need them to work in sex trafficking or drug trafficking. They show that to those folks, and very often they are sent there by, have been in the past in prior administration, they're sent to the cities where they're going to be doing drug trafficking or sex trafficking. So it is, it is a very, very serious issue, and they do control those borders. Yeah, it, it, it. I mean, it reminds me almost of like a the the Sopranos or the Godfather or something, right? I mean, this it, it is an organized crime, and 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 so what's yeah, happening? But they're more vicious, and it spread. More it vicious. is spread more nationally, right? Like, it's, so it's imagine yeah, if exactly. like the Sopranos was everywhere, right? Like all across the country, yeah, not just yeah. in New Jersey, right? Like, I mean, that's the point is that so once they get into the border, and and, and so this is the, the interesting thing, Congressman. I don't know if you saw this. There were two reports yesterday about MS thirteen activity. In the, in the United States. There was one from Long Island where uh, there was an MS-13 member arrested in a stabbing. So they're, they're up in Long Island. Then there's another one yep. from Maryland in the suburbs of Washington, D.C., out in Wheaton, Maryland, right? So it's 30 miles from the Capitol, yep. right? Uh, there's uh, a, an MS-13 member who was arrested for forcing a 14-year-old girl to have sex with him repeatedly by filming it yep. the first time. Uh, it, it this, yeah. this is just in the suburbs of D.C. It's right outside where we are right yeah. now. It, it, this is America. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's everywhere across the country, right? You see reports yeah. like this. We had earlier on the show, we had Congressman Brooks from Alabama on. He was telling us about an incident mm-hmm. that happened just a few miles away from him in Huntsville. Uh, the, the, this is everywhere across the across the country. Can you explain? And that's why I think this is this does actually rise to the level of a national emergency. This isn't just a, if the president does this. It isn't just the president doing this because the Democrats blocked him in Congress, right, right and trying to find a way around that's it. Right. It really is a national emergency. It, it it absolutely is. It's one of the most critical national emergencies, you know, we've had in the last uh, 40, 50 years. You know, of course, Carter uh, declared a national emergency when because of his uh, ineptness, his misunderstanding of the Middle East and just poor presidency, uh, he encouraged getting rid of a guy, wasn't a great guy, but the Shah of Iran, and he welcomed the Ayatollah Khomeini as a man of peace, and uh, our embassy got attacked. He declared a national emergency. That involved 51 people, and they were precious American lives, uh, but... And and fortunately, they were saved when uh, Reagan, the day Reagan took office. But he declared a national emergency because of his incompetence as president. Uh, But and you had in 2009, Barack Obama. It it was a serious problem. H1N1 uh, uh, bird flu. He declared a national emergency because of the bird flu. And it was serious and it, it did take some lives. But neither of those compared to the national emergency on our border, and it needs to be declared. Now, I know the the president has a bunch of people who are – some are saying just declared already, like Lindsey Graham did. But there are others that are saying the Democrats know we have a problem on the border. They've said in past times we have a problem on the border. They have voted for structure. but they have gotten so far left in the Democratic Party, they're afraid to come out and say what they have before about needing a barrier and securing the border and stopping illegal immigration. So they're hoping the president will declare a national emergency so that it gets them off the hook and then they can blame him and then they can go to court and find some Obama judge with uh, all due respect, uh, if any is due, to John Roberts. Um, There are 
Obama judges, there are Clinton judges, and usually you can tell the difference between them and judges that care uh, greatly about the Constitution. But they'll find one of those judges, they'll stop uh, what the president's doing unconstitutionally, legislating from the bench, but that's what they're hoping. So I, I know there are people that are telling the president, don't declare it. It gets the Democrats off the hook. They need to do their job and just agree to a barrier where we need it on the southern border. And if they don't, surely the American people will hold them accountable. I don't know. Uh, I see both sides, but I'm for securing the border and stopping the loss of lives. Yeah. So, Congressman, where 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 does this go from here? We're obviously now in the longest shutdown the federal government has ever had at uh, uh, 22 days. Uh, and and the Democrats continue to refuse to negotiate. Where, do, where does this go from here? Well, it uh, the president is, you know, it's been reported today. I think y'all talked about, you know, he's ready to go. He's in Washington, ready to reach an agreement. And uh, Pelosi, uh, you know, I don't think she's gone to Hawaii today, but uh, she is not interested in negotiating just like she has not been for the last 22 days. One day she said she'd give a dollar for the wall, but the rest of the time she says not one dime. And so there's no negotiation. There's no compromise at all. The only compromise comes from the Republican side, from President Trump, who he's a he's a great deal maker. But even the best deal maker in the country, which Donald Trump may be, is not going to be able to work an agreement when one side says we're not interested in an agreement. We are not going to compromise whatsoever. No matter what you offer, we will not compromise and allow a barrier of any kind. Uh, So it's going to continue, Matt, just like it is. Uh, until there is enough political pressure on the Democrats uh, to save the lives, save the tragedies from continuing to happen because of our porous border. Mm-hmm. So All right. Keep going. All right. Well, Congressman Louis Gomer from the great state of Texas, where can people go to follow you online, sir? Uh, uh, well, it's uh, Gohmert, uh, uh, dot com is a good place to go. Twitter, uh at Rep. Louis Gohmert. So, uh, but but thanks for continuing to keep the focus on this. It's only when people across America make clear to the Democrats they demand them to do their job and secure our border that this is going to be resolved. And and by the way, people keep talking about the longest comprom or the longest shutdown, but it's only about a fourth of the government that shut down. Usually when there's a shutdown, it's everything. And this isn't the case now. All right. Well, Congressman Louis Gomer from the great state of Texas, sir, thank you for joining us here on Bright Bright News Saturday.